Okay, yeah. we're going to go over the steps of uh, induction for general anesthesia using an endotracheal tube, placing someone on the ventilator. Before you start, you just want to make sure that you come over here to the ventilator and set the tidal volume to the appropriate weight of the patient. Then we're going to pre-oxygenate the patient, and then once we get a, uh, the vital signs, uh, we'll write those down, then it's time to induce the patient. The next step after induction is to tape the eyes, and you don't want to just stick eye tape on carelessly. The correct way to put on eye tape is to use both hands to grab the upper eyelid and to push it down over the bottom eyelid. And then we do it with both eyes, and now we can go ahead and intubate. Once you get to the vocal cords, go ahead and pull the stylet out. Have them pull the stylet out as you advance. Do not let them pull the... Uh, endotracheal tube out. Then we're going to dispose of the blade in sterile fashion here. And then if we use the scissor technique when innovating, we'll go ahead and get rid of that uh, right glove. And we'll go ahead and inflate here, hook up our circuit, and then I'm going to turn on SIBO fluorine because I want the patient to stay asleep, and then it's time to check for breath sounds. Okay. When I'm checking for breath sounds, I want to make sure that I'm pressing down firmly. And then come over here, what I'm supposed to be doing is I make sure that I go to bag mode, turn my APL valve closed, and squeeze hard and fast so that he can hear him as best as he can. After we've seen that breath sounds are bilateral, we'll go ahead and place on the vent. Now we can go ahead and tape in our endotracheal tube As soon as that endotracheal tube is uh, secured, you're going to want to put on a nerve stimulator, especially if you use succinylcholine, because that's going to wear off soon. You're going to want to make sure that the patient has twitches before you can redose your paralytic. Once you get that uh, nerve stimulator on, we're going to want to put a temperature probe. We can use an esophageal temperature probe, or we can use a skin temperature probe like this. So how this works is this temperature probe, Come, go ahead and zoom back here. This temperature probe is designed to go in the axillary region. We can actually use it as a nasal temperature probe by just disconnecting here. And then coming over here to the nose, kind of make a little 7 or a little L like that, and go ahead and place it in. And then we can use this sticker up here to secure it into place. If I was going to use an esophageal temperature probe, the way to do this is just to grab the lower jaw and lift it up and then to advance it like so. Okay, once that's done, you're going to want to make sure that you come over here and position the arms. And then once these arms are, are positioned over here, we want to secure them into place. And we make sure they're positioned properly. And then we'll, we'll want to make sure that we put on a bear hugger. So it's just designed to go on the patient like this. So I'll go ahead and remove this sticker, place it right there. And then there's these little tabs here that we'll pull. And then we can tie it underneath the patient. Okay, once this bear hugger's on, you just want to make sure that you don't turn the bear hugger on until the patient is draped. You don't want air to blow all over the sterile field. So make sure the patient's draped before you put the bear hugger on. Then lastly, uh, before incision, you just want to make sure that you start the antibiotic. Just make sure that there's also uh, special things that you might need to do based on the case. You might need to put an OG or an NG tube in. You might need a hotline. There are some steps that we covered that you might not need to do on every uh, induction, but uh, hopefully just giving you a roundabout idea of uh, the flow of how it should go.